All right, you guys, so this is going to just cover the little warm up that we've just done today and also looking at uh, columns three and four of your shape slab to make sure that you've done those correctly and then you can move forward with columns five through seven. So in the Canvas assignment today, the warm up was to take the molecule CSF2 through the first four columns of the shape slab. So the very first thing that we did with CSF2 is to add those valence electrons. And when we do that, we end up with 24. So four from the carbon, six from the sulfur, seven from each fluorine, and we get a total of 24. Then we have to draw our structure. Now, when you draw your structure, you're gonna end up with carbon in the middle because carbon is the most needy of those elements. It needs four more to complete its octet versus two or one. And then we end up distributing our electrons. When we give everybody eight in this molecule, we end up with two too many. All right, we have 26 valence electrons in the picture. We're only supposed to have 24. This is where we go erase a pair, erase a pair, add a pair to share, and we end up with a double bond. Now, we haven't really gone through this in super detail, but how did you decide which one to put the double bond with, okay? Well, it does go with sulfur, and I'm gonna explain that to you right now. We didn't really think that one through when we were uh, picking this molecule as part of today's activity. But if we look at the periodic table, Okay, fluorine is only one away from being stable. Okay, so when it needs to form bonds, it will only share one of its electrons in order to gain one electron from the other element. Okay, so one of those electrons is from fluorine and one of them is from carbon, and it's a nice even sharing relationship. Okay, so it gets its one with a single bond, and that's all it will ever, ever form is a single bond. Okay, sulfur though, sulfur is here, sulfur is two away from being stable. So sulfur needs to share two to get two. It can form two single bonds or it can form a double bond and uh, it, that will give it its octet. If it forms anything less than two bonds, then that means that it's got a coordinate covalent bond where both of those electrons came from one element and nature tends to avoid those bonds, okay? And then carbon, similar, okay, carbon needs four more to become stable. So carbon will form four bonds. It'll form four single bonds, it'll form a double bond and two single bonds, it'll form a triple bond and a single bond, it'll form two double bonds. But whatever it does, it's gonna have a total of four, okay? So in order to decide where I wanted to put that double bond, I looked at how many bonds they like to form. And sulfur typically forms two bonds, and that's why I put that double bond there. If you, and I didn't teach you that beforehand, so if you didn't know that, that's fine. If you made a double bond anywhere, you were following the process right, and we will try to avoid doing this to you on the test, okay? There won't be a second option of where you can put the double bond when we do the test. And if there is, we will specifically label it as resonance structures, and you'll have to draw it all of the ways that are possible. All right, shape-wise, carbon has three things attached to it no lone pairs. So the farthest part three things can get is 120, which is a flat triangle, trigonal planar, okay? So flat triangle is the, the shape, but, but obviously we have to give it a more complicated name in chemistry, right? So trigonal planar. And then no symmetry because trigonal planar is symmetrical, but only if all of the outer atoms are the same element. So no symmetry for this molecule. All right, now I'm going to take you through the answers to the um, third and fourth column of the shape slab so that you can check those and you can fix them before you go on. If you don't fix them, then your, your lab is going to suffer for that on our further columns here. So up at the top, we have HBr. That's your first molecule on your shape slab. It is linear. It only has two atoms. There is no central atom, so it's linear. And it is not symmetrical because the line doesn't have the same element on both ends. H2O is that next one. That one is bent. It looks nice and linear on paper, but lone pairs bend molecules. So those lone pairs on the oxygen force those hydrogens a little bit closer to each other, and that's going to make it a bent molecule. Bent molecules are never symmetrical. Lone pairs on that central atom, no symmetry, okay? Because a lone pair is not the same as a bonded hydrogen. So it's not symmetrical from a three-dimensional perspective, okay? So no symmetry on that. NH3 is the next one. That's a trigonal pyramid, okay? Remember, trigonal means three things are attached to the central atom, hydrogen, 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 okay? But pyramid, because there's a lone pair on the nitrogen and that forces it up into a pyramid shape instead of allowing it to be that nice flat triangle. No symmetry on that one either. Lone pairs mean no symmetry. All right, CH4 is the next one. CH4 is a tetrahedral. Four things attached is tetra, okay, tetrahedral. 
And it is symmetrical because all four things that are attached are hydrogen. So the entire exterior of the molecule is the same. All right, C2H6, that has two central atoms. Now we wanna focus on just one of them when we're looking at shape. So if I just pick the left carbon, it has four atoms attached to it, no lone pairs. So that would be a tetrahedral, okay? Three hydrogens and a carbon all attached to it. So that one's a tetrahedral. They're both tetrahedral in shape and then they're attached to each other, okay? Um, don't, don't worry about these. We're not gonna have a double central atom on the test. So we're gonna focus on much simpler molecules, but that one's a tetrahedral for each carbon. But when we look at symmetry, we wanna zoom out and look at the entire molecule. The exterior of that molecule is all hydrogen. Okay, and if it's all hydrogen, then that means that it is symmetrical. Okay, everything around the outside of that molecule is a hydrogen. Okay, this one down here, C2H4, that one is going to be trigonal planar. So just pick one carbon, it has three things attached to it, no lone pair, so it's a flat triangle, trigonal planar. They're each trigonal planar. Symmetry, look at the whole. I've got hydrogens all the way around, nothing else on the top to make something different to compare to. So because it's all hydrogen around the outside, that one is symmetrical. And then finally, the bottom one, C2H2 is going to be linear. Each carbon is attached to two things, no lone pairs to bend it, so it's linear. And it is not there, it is symmetrical, sorry, because both ends of the line are exactly the same, okay? All right, let's see the next side. Okay, so we've got CO2 up there. CO2, carbon has two things attached to it, no lone pairs on carbon. That's all we care about is the central atom. So that one is linear and it is symmetrical because both ends of the line are the same. PCL3 is going to be a trigonal pyramid. Again, that lone pair on phosphorus bends that up into a pyramid and it prevents those chlorines from being in that nice trigonal planar 120 degree molecule. That lone pair bends it up and also it takes away the symmetry. No symmetry in PCL3. BF3, BF3 is one of those weird ones. Remember boron is stable with six. So each of those fluorines has an octet, but boron only has six electrons, it's all single bonds to fluorine, and that is a trigonal planar molecule. And because all three elements are fluorine, it is going to be symmetrical. H2S is bent, and bent is never symmetrical because lone pairs are not the same as atoms. H2CO is going to be trigonal planar because again, three things attached, no lone pair, so it's a nice flat triangle. No symmetry on that one because oxygen is not the same as hydrogen. HOCl is going to be bent. And again, lone pairs bend molecules. No symmetry ever for bent, but definitely not when your two outer atoms are different. Oxygen, down here, oxygen is linear and that's because it's only two atoms, so they're gonna make a line no matter how you put them together. And they are symmetrical because it is the same element. And then finally, CH3Cl is going to be a tetrahedral, and it is not symmetrical because the four atoms attached to carbon are not the same element, okay? So even if I had done CH2Cl2, like I had chlorine and chlorine and hydrogen and hydrogen, it still would not be symmetrical. Remember, all four have to be the same element in order to have symmetry. Okay, please, please, please watch the video in its entirety that explains the rest of the shapes lab. It really goes into detail. It covers a lot of the 8.4 information, and you really need to understand this in order to complete this process. At the end of the lab, there are two questions, and you have to get through column seven in order to answer those two questions, and she explains it to you in the video very well on how to figure out the answer to those questions, okay? Please email me if you have questions. Good luck with the rest of the lab. And yeah, come see me on Friday if you'd like. Talk to you later.